new information after or a teenager was hit and killed Friday night in Huntington. Troopers say the 13-year-old girl was hit and killed by a marked cruiser driven by an off-duty Cowell County Sheriff's deputy. As News Channel 3's Kimberly Keggy shares, troopers say the deputy behind the wheel was not impaired or intoxicated. Dozens of law enforcement officers rushed to the intersection of 31st Street and 5th Avenue Friday evening. That's where West Virginia State Police say a 13-year-old girl was hit and killed by a marked cruiser driven by an off-duty Cabell County Sheriff's deputy. The family identifying the teen as Lainey Hudson. It was horrific. I have a two-year-old son that walks right there on that sidewalk. It could have been him. Troopers tell WSAZ the deputy behind the wheel passed two breathalyzer tests while on scene. And their blood alcohol levels results read 0.0%. The deputy was then taken in a cruiser to the state police's field office for a field sobriety test. Both tests are routine protocol. Anytime. West Virginia State Police are working an incident where someone is killed. He was given um, not only breath tests, which indicated he had not been drinking, he was also given field sobriety tests um, by a certified drug recognition expert. One of our troopers has taken extensive training and it ruled out any kind of impairment whatsoever. Cabell County Sheriff Chuck Zirkel says none of the department's cruisers have dash cameras. And witnesses told troopers the deputy had a green light at the time of the incident. We're going to remove the black box from the vehicle and download the data from that. Uh, that'll determine speed. The deputy is on administrative leave pending the outcome of the investigation. Kimberly Keggy, WSAZ News Channel 3, Huntington. After data is pulled from the black box and it's reviewed, a reconstruction team from out of the county will review the incident. Cabell County Sheriff Chuck Zirkel says the sheriff's office is launching an internal investigation, which is routine when there are allegations that someone violated policy. Reckless actions of a man who swore to protect and serve Laney and everyone else in her community. Laney will forever be 13 because off-duty Cabell County Sheriff's Deputy Jeffrey Racer driving north on 31st Street in a marked cruiser with an unidentified woman in the passenger seat, according to witnesses on the scene, struck her in a crosswalk near 5th Avenue in Huntington, West Virginia. Neither the media nor the Sheriff's Office nor the state police, by the way, are commenting on this unidentified woman sitting in a police cruiser during the accident. Seems she would be a likely material witness, but nobody's even acknowledging she was there. The Cabell County Sheriff. So I'm in the shower getting ready to go to bed, and I hear my messenger uh, going off. Well, when I got out and checked it, it was uh, from somebody I had no idea who it was, and it said, I hope this is Lainey's mom. It's 911. Well, of course, I'm thinking, oh, anyways, I mean, I had just talked to Sissy. Then the, another message comes through from the same person that says, never mind, she's dead. Well, I think that it's just some mean kids pranking me. So I get another call from somebody, and um, they tell me, you know, Lainey had been hit, hit by a vehicle. And I'm like, listen, please quit calling me with this nonsense. And this woman was like, um, Opal, listen, this is Logan's mother. This is not a prank. L L um, Logan just said that Lainey was hit by a cop car. She never told me that Sissy was dead, though. So uh, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. So I call my sister to come get me, and um, I call the hospital, thinking that you know, um, you know, that's where they would take her. Well, they didn't have her. At 10:53, I called 911 and told them that somebody had told me that my daughter had just been hit in the East End um, by a police officer. Uh, I need to know something. And he comes back on the line and he said, "Honey, there's been no 911. There's been no 911 report." Anyways, I waited for an hour and a half for the police to show up. They never showed up, so my dad showed up, and he's just got this look on his face, and he tells me, um, you know, your sister's up there on the scene, but he, of course, my dad didn't tell me that she was dead, uh, I don't think. So he puts me in the car, and he drives me up there, and I, I see all the police cars, so I jump out of the car, and officer comes straight over to me, and I'm asking where Laney's at, and he tells me I can't see her to get back in the vehicle, uh, and 
then that's, I think he may have said, you know, she's dead, I can't see her. And I'm like, okay, well, I had, I knew in my head that I waited for him for an hour and a half. It was a 30 minute drive. So I'm confused as why my baby's still on the ground. And um, he's like, you know, we're doing an investigation. Give us just a few minutes, we're almost done. We're gonna get her up, we'll take her to St. Mary's and you can go over there and see her. So I go over to St. Mary's, but my sister and my brother stay there. Well, at 2.42, my brother calls me and says, Sissy, they just picked her up off the ground. 2.42, remind you, this happened at 10.25 at night. 10.42, but they didn't take her straight to St. Mary. They took her straight to Charleston. I'm not even sure who identified my baby. I'm, I'm, I'm upset, of course. Uh, I'm not under, for five out four or five hours, she laid out there? For what reason? You know, uh, I don't understand it. And then, and then I get even more upset because they should have taken her to St. Mary's to where somebody who, I mean, who even identified her? You know, they take her straight to Charleston for what reason? I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Of course I'm upset about it. You know, I, I don't know how to, I don't know what to think or how to feel. Or I mean, I don't know. I really don't know. Laney's mom also commented on the disclosure about the supposed findings of the police cruiser's black box. They told me that, you know, the black box didn't show nothing, which already, I knew that's what they was going to come back and say. They, just because that's what they told, they told the news, you know, it was a possibility that it may come back and show nothing. There's no way it didn't show nothing. You know, they, they said, you know, where Laney's only 12, 13 years old and such a small child, you know, that maybe the impact wouldn't, but... Laney wasn't uh, a, a normal, uh, small 13-year-old. Laney weighed 155 pounds and was 5'5". Five five. The, the evidence is on his car. You know, her whole body print is on the hood of that car. There's no possible way they can come back and, and not say he wasn't speeding. It's not possible. There's no way. There's no way. There's. I mean, do, listen, I know, I know that Jeff Racer did not intentionally hit and kill my baby. I know he didn't. But had he not been speeding and, and or paying attention to his mistress sitting beside him, my baby would still be here. If he would have hit Laney going 35, 40, even 45 miles an hour, Laney would still be here. She would still be here. The children that were with her told me that he hit her so hard that she flew as high as the, the, the red lights. That's a pretty good ways from the ground. The funeral, which I um, think, I thank God, I, I, I didn't want to have an open casket for Lainey, uh, just because I know that I mentally couldn't handle walking in a funeral home and seeing her lay in the casket. But when, when the, the coroner or the, the, the funeral guy called me to tell me about Lainey, told me that we couldn't have an open casket because Sissy's face would have to be reconstructed. That don't happen going at 35 miles an hour. That stuff just don't happen. That don't happen. And my baby would be here. I know she would be here. She would be here. She would be here. They, I mean, the, the kids that were with me told me that when Laney started across the street, that the headlight was up on the eighth, you know, it, it was a good waist from Laney, a, a good waist. And so that she didn't even make it to, she didn't even, two or three seconds, and he was on her. So they didn't even get out run Laney. Opal Hudson also commented on eyewitness accounts of Deputy Jeff Racer's actions immediately after the fatality. And then for him to get out of the, the, the police car and, and not even go check on her, and the neighbors that come out to try to help her, he's yelling, don't f***ing touch her, don't f***ing touch her. One of the neighbors said when she heard the initial hit that she was expecting to come out and find a two or three car pile up. And when she come out, of course, she sees a baby laying on the ground. She said her mother instincts kick in, and she goes to run to Laney, and he starts hollering, don't touch her, don't touch her. He does, however, go over to the kids that are standing on the side of the road, which were with Laney, and they're asking him, are you a police officer? He tells them no, and then they say, aren't you in that police car? He again tells them no. You know, and, and for him not to even have enough respect to even try to say sorry, look, I fucked up. You know, I didn't. I I know he didn't intentionally hit that baby. I know he didn't. But his carelessness caused her to die. And for him not to even say sorry to anybody, not to even care to be out going to the Cleveland Browns game with his girlfriend. You no, know, it's just sad. Him. I mean, it's just sad. It's just sad. 
Opal Hudson also recounts a strange interaction she had with Sheriff Zirkel, which she says was recorded by a friend. We rallied at the uh, courthouse, and uh, I asked to speak to him, and he so he comes downstairs. Remind you, I have somebody with me recording this conversation. He walks in the door, and he says, can I help you, ma'am? And I said, I'm just um, wondering why no law enforcement has uh, reached out to me even when my daughter passed away. He has this spark on his face, says, huh, well, I don't know, ma'am. You have to ask the state police that. I said, listen, the state police didn't kill my daughter. You guys did. And uh, my person that was with me, she was like, did you just laugh at her? He's like, no, I didn't laugh at her. She was like, would you like to see it? Because you're on recording. So then he gets upset, you know, and 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 um, I'm like, I, I say something about um, Jeff being paid. And I said, you know, while I'm out trying to figure out how I'm going to pay for this baby's journal, he's being paid for doing it. And he says, well, ma'am, that's just something that we do. I said, wasn't you involved in an accident last year where, where you hit and killed a, an elderly man? Yes, ma'am, I was, but he pulled out in front of me. Of course he did. Of course, you T-boned him, but, but okay, we'll say he pulled out in front of you. So then he um, looks at me and asks me if I, if I even had Laney, and I'm like, what? Why would you ask me that? Yes, I have Laney. What do you mean? So anyways, I'm upset by this time, and I'm acting a little bit silly, and so my brother's trying to get me out of the office, and before I leave, he pats me on the arm and says, Ma'am, I hope you never experience a tragic accident. Many are left with the impression that there are some shady things going on with this incident and the ongoing so-called investigation or cover-up, whichever one you prefer, is something that the public probably needs to continue to press the issue on. Laney's aunt set up this GoFundMe page to help with the funeral costs. I'll leave that in the description and in the